Hey everyone, welcome back to Ginger the Plane. Today we're talking about a dream that many of us have had at some point, buying your first airplane. But it's not just about fulfilling a childhood dream, it's a big financial commitment and it's important to strike a balance between your heart and your wallet. A good friend of mine bought his first airplane recently and I'm so incredibly happy for him. The following photos and videos are from the day he picked her up. Seeing his Cessna 172M sitting there on the ramp really reminded me of the amazing experience that we had buying Ginger and the nervous excitement that I had flying her for the very first time. This inspired me to share a few thoughts on buying your first airplane, but I don't want to really focus too much on the transactional side of things. Rather, I'd like to share my top seven steps to making a sensible decision. So let's get into it. Buy for the type of flying you'll do. Knowing how you'll use an airplane is the first step in deciding what to buy. For example, a student pilot may decide a Cessna 150 or a Piper Cherokee or even a Vans RV12 may fit their needs better for a docile trainer that will help them learn the basics. Whereas an experienced pilot may prefer a high performance retractable or a flow plane that they can take on long trips or landing on remote scenic lakes. We're all different and we all like things for lots of different reasons. Matching the type of flying you'll be doing with the airplane you'll need to do that will ensure that you're happy with your purchase. Another way of thinking about this is know your mission. Students learning to fly won't be straying too far from their home airport. More experienced pilots may want to fly high and fast, but most pilots enjoy flying to a favorite breakfast or lunch spot. I mean, $100 hamburger, right? Buying a high performance retractable for 18 minute flights to your local diner may not make sense for a first airplane. A single engine, fixed gear that sips fuel and doesn't cost much in maintenance may be a better choice. There will, of course, be some folks who buy a Cirrus as their first airplane, and that's an example of buying your forever plane, and that's cool too. But for most of us, when we go out to buy our first airplane, we're looking for something that won't break the bank and that we can totally enjoy. And whatever that is for you, you just have to find it. But first, you have to think about what's your budget? An important step in buying your first airplane that sometimes causes buyers lots of distress is determining your budget. This will help you narrow down your options and find the best plane for you. Consider your current financial situation and any long-term financial goals you may have. There are really two types of budget. The money you'll need to buy your first airplane and the money you'll need to pay for ongoing costs of flying and maintaining your airplane. There are a lot of great videos that break down the money you'll need to buy an airplane and the different ways to do that. I'll list a few of the best examples down below in the description. Another step to consider is researching different types of airplanes. Now that you have an idea of your budget, it's time to start researching the different kinds of airplanes that are out there and available to you. There are many different options available including single engine, multi-engine, high performance, and lots of other variations in between. Consider your flying experience, the type of flying you want to do, and the size of the airplane you're going to need. It's all about your mission, right? I remember when I was looking for Ginger and I was trying to match my budget with my mission 
And honestly, I was looking at 182s, I was looking even at 210s. I'm a high wing guy, so that was kind of a natural progression of how I was searching. And I really wasn't looking at 172s, but the market was climbing, the prices were going up, and things kind of got away from me, frankly. And I wasn't able to afford a 182 anymore. But I'm so glad that I turned my attention to 172s. I'd have never found Ginger, and we would never have had such an amazing airplane uh, as we've been able to find. And really, if I'm honest with myself, most of my flying is in the local area. I head over to the San Juan Islands for a burger or a slice of pie. I might fly down to another airport, do some touch and goes, maybe meet up with a friend. But I'm not flying to California or Florida, so for me, getting a high altitude, really fast, high performance retractable airplane just really didn't make sense. So I think being honest with yourself and researching the different types of airplanes that match up with what you're really going to use the airplane for, you'll do yourself a world of good and you'll find the right airplane. Consider the costs of ownership. Before you make a purchase, it's important to consider all of the costs of ownership. This includes not just that initial purchase price, but also the ongoing expenses such as maintenance, fuel, insurance, and upgrades. And of course, other things like taxes, and hangar, or tie down, or whatever costs you may have to secure your aircraft. Be sure to research these costs thoroughly and factor them into your budget. My rule of thumb for Ginger is to budget about $10,000 a year for everything. And that is literally maintenance, fuel, insurance, taxes, the whole thing. I fly 100 hours per year, and honestly, I haven't spent that much yet. So that leaves a lot of room for unexpected maintenance, fuel price hikes, and maybe even a little more flying time. And you know, speaking of the costs of ownership, I've had a lot of non-flying friends say, wow, you know, I thought flying was for rich people and how do you do it? <laughs> okay, I'm not a rich person, but I, I can make it work because I've made choices uh, in our financial lives that allow me to do that. Let me explain. So I don't golf. Uh, I don't really like golf. I'm the guy that throws the golf bag in the pond and wraps the clubs around the tree. I just don't like it. But I have friends that golf and they'll spend ten to $15,000 a year easy on club dues and going to different golf courses, flying places to golf. You get the idea? I also have friends who are into boating and they'll easily spend 10 to 15 grand a year uh, paying for the boat and payments. They also have maintenance, they've got mortgage fees and all kinds of other costs. And then, you know, how many people do you know who drive a brand new pickup truck? Have you seen the prices of those lately? Those are easily over $100,000. And that's for a basic truck. And then you see these lift kits and all the other stuff. I think they call them bro dozers. I don't know. But, you know, my point is it's all about how you choose to spend your money. So for me, budgeting 10 grand is really, uh, it's a significant amount of money, but it's not a hardship. And it allows my wife and I to enjoy Ginger to her fullest. And just something to think about when you're looking at that cost of ownership. Be sure to get a pre-purchase inspection. Once you've found a plane that you're interested in, it's time to get a pre-purchase inspection or pre-purchase examination if you're a Mike Bush follower. This is a really a crucial step and it ensures that the airplane that you're getting is in good condition and that you're making a sound investment. A qualified mechanic will inspect the airplane from top to bottom, including the engine, the airframe, and the avionics. And there are lots of buyer assistance companies out there to choose from. Uh, Savvy is one. I've got a friend, Jeff, who owns Tomahawk. 
that's another great one but the bottom line is you know most sellers are going to expect you to do a pre-buy and they'll be very accommodating balancing your heart with your wallet buying an airplane is a big financial commitment and it's important to balance your heart with your wallet what do i mean by that well it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of fulfilling a dream but it's also really important to make a smart financial decision. Be realistic about your budget and consider all of the costs associated with ownership before making a purchase. Try to not overanalyze every detail, AKA analysis paralysis. And also try not to allow fear of making a big mistake stop you from making a buy or no buy decision. Do your due diligence and trust that you have all of the information needed to make a good decision. So there you have it folks. Buying your first airplane can be a rewarding and exciting experience, but it's important to balance your heart with your wallet. With the right research, planning and preparation, you can find the perfect plane for you and start enjoying the skies. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, I'll see you out there.